The purpose of this tutorial is to show you how to utilize Dynamo to create uh, representations of non-perpendicular grids into elevation planes. On the screen, I have a distribution of radial grids that because they are not perpendicular to the elevation plane, they will not display in Revit. So uh, with this definition, now it's possible. Uh, the Dynamo definition not only uh, displays the location of the grid, but also displays the location of the number, appropriate number. If this uh, array distribution changes, say I change this to uh, 10, you see there, are, there were new elements created, and if I extend the size of scope box, um, all I need to do is to run the definition, and the grids will be uh, updated accordingly. So let me walk you how this definition was put together. First, there are two pieces of information we need to create inside the Revit object. We need a scope box. The scope box has to span in height uh, the levels which uh, uh, will determine the height of the grids. Uh, and as such, uh, what I've done is uh, create a scope box and give it a name and uh, associate the south elevation uh, to that scope box, as you can see here. You may want to associate to this scope box the rest of the exterior elevations that you need uh, the grid to. The other thing I need to do is to create a reference plane and give it a name. Uh, the reference plane is going to be the surface that the grids are going to project to. They don't have to overlap the scope box. They could be placed anywhere. They could be tilted if it, if it matters and they could be associated uh, around different elevations as well. And the other is to create a, a generic annotation. This is a dummy family that has two parameters. It has a, an instant number and it has a length. The length equals the height of the scope box. So <clears throat> as input from the users, uh, we need to select a scope box in the model. We need to select uh, the reference plane where that is going to be used by Dynamo to project the grids. And we need uh, a dummy grid family. And we also need to select the elevation view in which this is going to be projected. So we start by selecting all the grids in the project. We convert them into curves. And then we convert these curves into uh, planes. And to do that, I convert the curves into vectors and rotate that vector 90 degrees. See, the idea here is that I have these planes that are going to be intersecting with a curve that is placed in the reference plane. So next, I after selecting the scope box, um, I create a bounding box. The bounding box is this um, invisible boundary that encompasses the entire uh, size of the scope box. And for some reason, uh, I wasn't able to retrieve the, uh, the geometry of the scope box as a solid. So I use a uh, bounding box in order to do that. So the, the scope box is going to give me a maximum point and a minimum point. The difference between the maximum and the minimum point in the vertical is going to be the height of the scope box, right? So that's uh, what the <coughs> this line is doing. And uh, I draft a line between the minimum point and the maximum point, and then project this line into level zero uh, 
and then project again this line onto the reference plane surface in order to get a line that I can use to intersect with the grid uh, plane locations. And that's what this uh, series of nodes does. Um, the point is to construct a point node. It's, uh, it's, it's the custom node created by Launchbox. The next step is to obtain the grid names that are going to be created. So from here I have a list of grids, right? a list of curves. But not all these curves intersects uh, the reference plane. And what I'm doing in this set of nodes is to uh, find which are the grids that are intersecting and which are not. And then for those that have been um, that are intersecting, I will I will extract the number of the actual grid so that it could be populated into the dummy grid. In this other node, what I do is to extract the insertion point of the dummy grid. So, <clears throat> given that I know what is the height of the scope box, and that I know the geometry intersection between the grid planes and the curve projection, then I was able to uh, create this list of points. These are the points uh, between the, the grids and the reference plane. And finally, what I do is uh, to create the dummy grids into the view, I map the grid names and define the length of the dummy grid by matching it the height of the scope box. And this is what this set of, uh, of nodes does. Uh, for this, I'll use family instance by point in view. This is a fantastic node. Uh, these views scale uh, in order to create a two-dimensional uh, element in a view. I need uh, to actually uh, divide the entire length or entire height of uh, the bounding box here. The, bound the height of the bounding box is 49 feet. Um, and divided by the view factor. And the view factor for the south elevation is 96. And this gives me the actual printed size of that uh, grid. So running it again quickly from left to right, uh, we uh, converted the grids into planes. Uh, then we find the point intersection of the grids with the scope box and the elevation plane, or the reference plane. Uh, find the intersection points of the dummy grids. Uh, obtain the grid names that intersects with the elevation plane and uh, then uh, populate the, the dumb grid, place them in a view with a location and, uh, and set the parameter values. Alright, I hope uh, this helps. Have any questions, let me know.